Good evening. I'm Jack Barry. Tonight, Hank Bloomberg Garden, who has so far won $116,000, will play a fourth tie game against Harold Craig at $2,000 a point. In the 1950s, quiz shows were the kings of primetime television. Yes, the $64,000 question. Eleanor, what's the word beginning with a Y that names a fermented milk food? Isn't that $2,500 a point? The category is boxing. High pressure with big stakes. Much could be won or lost in just a matter of moments. A recipe that drew in millions of viewers every night. From New York City, Mr. Charles Van Doren, and returning with $69,500 from Forest Hills, New York, Mr. Herbert Stemple. <laughs> In the fall of 1956, NBC's 21 was struggling in the ratings. The show's sponsor, Geritol, demanded a change. At the time, the reigning champion was Herbert Stemple. Herb Stemple, $69,500 is at stake. The decision was made to rig the show, bring in someone more appealing, and that someone was 30-year-old Charles Van Doren. Well, Mr. Van Doren, I guess you know pretty well from last week how to play this game. You've got to try to score 21 points. You do it by answering questions that have a point value from 1 to 11. Van Doren carried prestige, a professor at Columbia University, the good-looking son of a Pulitzer Prize-winning poet. He stood in stark contrast to Herb Stemple. The first category, the Civil War. How much do you know about it? You tell us from 1 to 11. That's an awful big subject. Uh... I'll try for eight points. For eight points. In their first showdown, Stemple and Van Doren tied three times. Andrew Johnson of Tennessee. You're right, you have nine points. The ties were prearranged. A calculated attempt to build up suspense. Eva Saint, uh, Eva Marie Saint. Right, you have yeah. 10 points. What motion picture won the Academy Award for 1955? On the waterfront? No, I'm sorry, the answer is Marty. Marty. The strategy worked. The following week, millions tuned in to watch Van Doren dethrone Stemple. If either of you want to stop the game, you must tell me so right now. I'll stop. Then you win $20,000. Congratulations, Mr. Van Doren. Twenty-one had its new champ. Ratings would skyrocket as Van Doren's winning streak continued. Patterson, Joseph Patterson. It would be, and you have eight points. He'd answer his way to thousands of dollars, becoming one of television's biggest stars, even finding his way to the cover of Time magazine. That's your answer, Atahualpa? That's right. Then you've scored 21 points. But it was a meteoric rise all built on a fraud. Throughout his entire reign, Van Doren was fed his answers. He was told how to behave, when to raise his eyebrows, when to rub his chin. It was a heavily manipulated drama, but one that went unchecked until the fall of 1958, when several other popular quiz shows were implicated in rigging operations. Van Doren repeatedly denied any wrongdoing. But when subpoenaed to testify before Congress on November 2nd, 1959, the golden boy of quiz shows caved. In the Senate hearing room, the dramatic climax of the probe of fixed and rigged quiz shows. Charles Van Doren's wife and father, poet Mark Van Doren, are in the audience. As committee chairman, Senator Orrin Harris opens the hearing. Charles Van Doren arrives to apologize and attempt to explain to the millions whose friendship and respect he had won. For television, the fallout was severe. The country had been deceived on a wide scale. Trust was tarnished and credibility undermined. Within a few years later, Congress made rigging a quiz show of federal crime and sponsors lost their grip on programming. Networks took greater control. 
Seeing was no longer believing.